Call to order the June 15th Transportation Committee meeting. Um, all commissioners are here except for Councilman Lambert, who had a, a passing in his family. Uh, Councilman Tegnelotti will lead us in the prayer, uh, followed by Pledge of Allegiance. Oh, son. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we ask your blessings as we gather tonight to do the business of the citizens of Ascension Parish. We ask that you intervene with your divine mercy through these difficult times to instill upon us patience and kindness toward one another. Help us to understand and respect one another as we go forward. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If the public would like to comment on any item, please bring a card up and hand it to Darla. And we'll be happy to give you your three minutes. Uh, it's crowded out there. Uh, we'll move on to item number four, committee chairman's report. I've got nothing to add at this time. Uh, moving on to um, number five. Uh, 5A is general business department report. Mr. Turo. Good evening. Uh, since we had a... Um a meeting last week I don't have really a, I don't want to hash through all the projects but I, I do have information uh, I know um, uh, Jeff Burst had handed out a packet that gives you a rundown of the move ascension program uh, kind of what it's about the, the projects that are currently under construction uh, along with uh, the projects that that we will have under construction shortly we have several that we uh, we should be putting out for bid uh, in the the next month. Um, so uh, uh, and those include uh, airline at uh, actually Germany at airline uh, and uh, the roundabout of uh, Henry and Highway 930. Uh, and there's going to be others to follow. Uh, another one is Seabro. Uh, the Seabro Safety Widening Project. Uh, I just wanted to give you a rundown of where we are with the six projects that are under construction right now. Uh, Highway 930 has very little left to do with it's uh, uh, left to be done on it, uh, so I call it like 98% complete. Uh, the Roddy Road Clearing and Grubbing Project uh, from Bayou Narcisse to Canty Road is 70% complete. The LA-73 at Brown Road project that adds left turn lanes on, uh, on Brown and on LA-73 is about 28% complete. Uh, LA-73 at Henry Road is 60% complete. Uh, and that project will have some lane closures uh, starting Thursday because we're going to have a milling machine on LA-73. And immediately following that, uh, they're going to be starting to put asphalt down. Uh, so, you know, that project is one that you should see, uh, you know, it should visibly uh, uh, have a lot of changes in the next uh, week or so. Uh, the LA-73 at Oakland project is, is going along as, at a nice swift pace. Uh, it's at 70%. Uh, the connector road uh, from Ashland to St. Landry is uh, about at 50% complete. They're still doing... Uh, 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 earthwork, dirt work on that that project. Uh, so uh, that operation should end in the next uh, couple of weeks. And then there'll be things that you can visibly see like limestone uh, for the base and all that. So uh, uh, these projects are moving along pretty good. I think we have uh, good contractors that are uh, uh, making changes out there and, and uh, working at a good pace. Uh, so if you have any any projects on the uh, move ascension program, if it's not something I can answer, uh, Jeff Burst is here also. So uh, that's about all I have on, on my end. Do I have any questions? Just one quick on St. Landry connector. Didn't we go ahead and go with open ditches? Correct. Okay. Open ditches. It has and some cross drains on it and a side ditch, but all that uh, is open ditch. Yeah, and they also had talked about possibly looking at a sidewalk or I'll hear it's not in these plans no? I don't think I'm that one okay 
Right. It's not in these plans. Uh, there's no driveways at all. It's strictly a road. Okay. That's all, Mr. Chair. Thank you. I don't have anything to add. Okay. Thank you all very much. Thank you. <coughs> okay. Item 5B, recommendation to adjust the transportation impact fee per ordinance. Uh, Mr. Jerome Fournier, please. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, uh, we're here before you tonight to uh, do the annual update of the tra transportation impact fee by ordinance. Um, I'll give you a little history on it since we have some new members. Um, the, the traffic impact fee um, ordinance was initially adopted in March of 2016. Uh, we did a major update in 2017 uh, when we commissioned the firm Duncan and, Duncan and Associates out of Austin, Texas to give us, give us an update of the program. Um, the program itself is divided. John, if I can get the overhead. Um, we have three, three zones that are in the traffic impact fee program. Zone one is the West Bank. Zone two is the blue area here, and that consumes the e southern part of the East Bank. And then zone three is the upper portion, which is um, the north part of the East Bank. Right? Um, the fee is based on what's called a consumption method formula. It's calculated in the Institute of Traffic Engineers um, trip generation table, something they publish every year. This is a nationwide study that they do. Um, basically gives us generation rates for different types of land uses. Um, the fees are collected upon the issuance of a building permit. Whenever someone comes in for a building permit, um, they have to pay the impact fee, right? Uh, we do grant some exemptions to the fee. Um, if there's a unit on a piece of property that's been there within the last five years and they're replacing that unit, um, if it's a similar land use type, they'll get an exemption from the fee. If it's the same size house, as an example, um, they'll get an exemption from the fee. All right. Um, John, if I can get the overhead again. The amount of money that we've collected and this, as of the beginning of the program until last Friday, did a calculation. Um, zone 1, District 1, that, again, that's the West Bank. We collected 90242 um, District 2, which is the south part of the East Bank, um, $2,736,011. And, and District 3, which is the major portion of the collections, that's North Park, Prairieville, and that area, uh, five million nine oh three six forty two all right the total amount that we've collected is eight point seven million all right so um, the projects that we're using those fees so far John if I can get the overhead again and I can zoom in on some of these you can see on the right hand column um, far right hand column this gives you the project name and then the amount of money that we're allocating from the traffic impact fees for those particular projects. So as an example, Roddy Road widening, is, uh, we, we're allocating 100,000. Um, the largest amount is uh, Germany Road intersection with, uh, with Airline Highway. We're allocating a million dollars for that from the impact fees. Right? So, um, I'd like to kind of go back to, I just I failed to mention this, but um, on the map itself, you see the roads in red. These are the traffic impact fee roads, and this is where the money can be used, right? Any small road in the parish, um, we, we're not allocating any of the fee money. We're only looking at major roads in the parish, and the reason for that is that we're looking to mitigate some of the impacts that the new development is having on the major thoroughfares in the city, in the, in the parish, right? So that's why you see those, all right? Um, right now, the council, the ordinance requires us to, to um, update the fee every year. Last year, we, we updated the fee and it actually went down 0.39%. Um, it's based on the engineering news record you can see at the bottom of here, I give you an explanation of what that is. Um, the, the building and construction cost indices for ENR, which is the engineering news record. It's a nationally publicized, uh, published uh, 
industry um, publication. Um, uses the, and we use the New Orleans area, and unfortunately they don't have one for Baton Rouge. That's the nearest geographical area that we can use. Um, so we basically take um, the previous one year change in the construction cost index and adjust it accordingly. This year, the percent change is 5.28%, right? So what you see now on the upper portion of this is the new figures, and I, this was in your packet as well. So on the, so the fee amount, the 100% of the fee amount is this column right here. Updated by 5.28% gives you this figure, 100% of the fee. And then per the ordinance, we've allocated 75, 70 percent of that fee is what we're collecting on the East Bank. And on the West Bank, we're collecting 35 percent of the fee. So we're basically approving the full allocation, but we're, or the full amount, but we're only allocating or collecting a percentage on East Bank. All right, so that's um, basically what we're doing this year. And so by ordinance, we're asking you to approve um, the increase. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm available for any questions you might have. Uh, Mr. Fournier, I've done some quick math. And since the inception of this, and I'm looking at districts two and three, since those are the two uh, the mm -hmm. largest districts and they get the most income, by, by collecting only 70%, We've given up $3.7 million in transportation funds. Now, I don't know um, how many projects, how many roundabouts that is, how many interchange improvements, or how many even added lanes that could be. But to give everybody an idea, our projected budget for this year based on tax returns is $7.9 million for transportation. That's everything. So we've given up almost half of that by only collecting 70%. That's why I think it's important that we uh, kind of get with the times. We've, we've heard the people in the parish say that transportation needs are the biggest need for everybody in this parish. Um, so it's certainly something I, I think people need to be aware of is how much money we've given up in the past. Uh, does anybody have any questions? Mr. Point, Mr. Just one. Councilman Cagliotti. Maybe a two-part question, but part one. A few of my constituents called, and in one particular case, it was a residential property. Behind his residence is a business mm -hmm. building that he owns, and he leases it out. Um, his daughter ran to some rough times and ended up, you know, moving back home, so, so to speak. Mm -hmm. She didn't want to move in with them, so she wanted to put a trailer on the property, mm -hmm. which she did. He got permits and all that, but then he said he got like a, I don't want to be quoted exact, but it was several thousand dollars in impact fees mm -hmm. for putting a trailer and she's the only has no children only car in only car out in addition to him and his wife's car mm -hmm. the the fees based on land use and if okay. you if you place another unit on a piece of property where there was no unit before let's say they had another trailer on there they removed it and put the new trailer okay. on we'd give them an exemption for that because they're replacing an existing unit. But if there was no unit there before, then they're subject to the fee. Okay. And, and, any, and, and um, we don't have an exception policy. Uh, you know, um, the only one I'm aware of is St. Tammany Parish that has a traffic impact fee, and they have an ordinance, a portion of the ordinance allows uh, low-income uh, families to, to get an exemption or, or maybe a reduction. Uh, they have to prove that they're low income, filling out the federal forms, providing documentation of that. Uh, we don't have that in our ordinance. So under that circumstance, Mr. John, that they they would be subject to the fee, and it's unfortunate, but that's you know the way it is. And part two on the this increase, how does that compare to similar parishes? surrounding parishes that also have a traffic impact fee. Where are we in comparison? Our fee is a little bit higher than Baton Rouge. Uh, it's, I, I don't know exactly where we are with, in comparing it with St. Tammany. Those are the only two parishes that I know of that have a traffic impact fee in the state. Um, 
We're a little higher than Baton Rouge, and I'm not quite, quite sure where we are. We might be a bit higher than, than St. Tammany Parish. I'm not quite Would sure. Would this change? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, overall. That's all, Mr. Chairman. Question? I, would, I wouldn't want to get some clarification. You may have said this, and if you did, I apologize. I didn't hear it. Um, but the money that are collected in each individual district, they are only spent on projects, on road projects in that district, right? That's correct. Okay. Yes. That's, I, I, I heard That's exactly. that, and I can't remember who I heard it from, so I just yeah. wanted to make sure that, that was clarified. I'm sorry. I'm glad, glad you brought that up. I didn't mention it earlier, but that is the case. Okay. Yeah. I figured you did. And I believe uh, you and I have spoken that we're going to review the roads, I think, at, at the five-year mark. Is that how this works? Correct. The ordinance says that every five years we need to look at a major update to the, to the program. We did that in 2017. Um, we can, if the council would like, in working with the administration, you can do that earlier. But it says at least every five years we need to look at the program in total, uh, look at the formulas, look at the roads, and, you know, include or exclude some. You know that that kind of thing. So I know some of the roads here we're doing like 930s one. Yeah, that, that's going to be done. It's no, right. no no longer needed on the list once we right, get to that exactly. point. Right, exactly. Yeah, the last time we did this, we looked at certain roads. Uh, as an example, 42 north part of the parish, we had in there from Airline Highway all the way to where it meets at 44. Well, that was under contract with DOTD. They're constructing it now, so we pulled it out of the program. Then they also, when they initiated the program, there was some anticipation at the time that they would include some of the cities. So we had roads within the city of Gonzales. We had roads within the town of Sorrento. So they're not participants in the program, so we pulled those roads out, right? So, yeah. And uh, I've been informed that St. Tammany Parish instituted their traffic impact fees in 2007. Okay. We, we waited a decade on ours. We were kind of behind the times, which kind of shows based on our funding and the condition of our roads. If we had done this back then, uh, I've heard anywhere, we, we'd have another $23 million with which to improve our roads. Okay. So that, that'd be huge. Okay. Councilman Cagliotti. So, so what we're doing, we're just complying with what we was already approved in correct. 2016, 2017, yeah. correct? As I, as, I mentioned in the staff the if, if I, as I mentioned in the staff report, the ordinance requires us to update the fees every year based on the construction cost index. And what that does is allow us to keep up with the cost of inflation or whatever the case may be. Okay. Okay, we need uh, motions to move this forward. Do I hear any motions? To, yes. Yeah. So I'd like to make a motion to update the fees to reflect 100%. Second. We have a motion and a second. Do we have any discussion? Any objection? So we'll move this to the full council. Thank, Thank you, Jerome. Great job. Moving on to item number, uh, number 5C, proposed ordinance requesting authority to be granted to the parish president to acquire right-of-way required to construct the LA-73 to Bluff Road LA-928 connector project. Mr. Turo. This is a, uh, you know, a project that we want to get uh, get moving. You know, it doesn't have a, uh, a distinct location yet. We just, you know, want to, uh, whenever we get to the point where we do have a, a project and right away plans, we want to be able to, to move forward with it. Motion, Mr. Chairman. We second. Have a, we have a motion by Councilman Cagliotti, a second by Councilman Mason. Any further discussion? Any objections? None. So moved. Item 5D, proposed ordinance requesting authority to be granted to the parish president to acquire right-of-way required to construct the LA-74 to Dutchtown High School Connector Project. Mr. Turo. Same, Same thing. thing. <laughs> motion, uh, Mr. Second. Mr. Chairman. <laughs> we have a motion by Councilman Kekalotti, second by Councilman Mason. Any further discussion? Any objections? None so moved. Uh, item 5E, approval of the Supplement 1 to the Scope of Task Order 1 to Move Ascension Project MA-17-10 to Plessis Road, US-61-73. Um, Mr. Turo. This is just some added work that was needed to tie in to the railroad, uh, you know, some extra topo work and different design work to be able to make a good tie in to the railroad that was required. Yeah. I don't think these are required come to us in the future. Y'all don't have to bring these. We okay. can move forward. Uh, Y'all can move forward on the supplements. I just don't want to slow projects down because yeah. we've got a lot of move ascension projects that we're trying to get moving. So in the future, y'all don't have to bring this. I, 
I mean, I guess it, we need we can vote on it since it's on the agenda, but yeah. I don't think it's even necessary. Motion. But second. we have a motion and a second. Uh, any discussion? Any objections? None. So moved. Item F, resolution to uh, resolution let's change to authorizing the parish president to execute an articles of agreement to relocate utility facilities with Dixie Electric Membership Corporation, DEMCO, for the relocation of existing overhead electric facilities for the Move Ascension project. A shocking. What about that, that other one? With that supplement, it, it does allow us to capture some added, uh, like $600,000 in added uh, federal funding on it. So it was important for us to tie it in. Uh, so that was just why, why we're doing it. Okay, very good. Motion for the shocking improvement. Okay. <laughs> yes, so uh, we're okay. on. So now no, we're F on now. F? Yes. Yeah, and uh, this was something that uh, Demco required. Uh, it was strange it was not uh, uh, something that you know we we typically have to do but it's something that uh, uh, that Demco requested of us and uh, uh, O'Neill Parenton got involved and came up with this document to uh, to get De Demco on board and, and make sure we don't have any way of uh, any excuse for them to slow down on utility relocation exactly like motion, we we, motion we send it to the full council for yes approval. mounts by councilman Kekalati second by councilman Mason any further none any objections none so moved item six so moved